Up next on Inside Champ Car, a double race weekend. Welcome to Inside Champ Car. He is Bill Strong. I am Brian Belansky. At least that's what I think I am this week. This week on the show, we're going to talk about two races. We've got a race this weekend here, out here, out west at Willow Springs. And then another race at the beautiful Autobahn Raceway in, in Illinois. Uh, it's, I know, I'm from Illinois. It's not Illinois. I know. Don't, don't send me hate mail. <laughs> We've also got a great tech tip. And a little later in the show, we catch up with uh, one of Champ Car's race directors, the one we haven't had on yet, so you can do the math and figure out who, who we're talking to. Great conversation. You don't want to miss it. Some some dirt on Bill, too, we hear about. So that's if, if there's no other reason to listen, that's a reason to listen. Hi, Bill. I sit there going, ah, la, 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 la. <laughs> Yeah. Hey, how you doing, Brian? I am really good, really good. Are you coming out our way? Good to have you are really lucky, by the way. Do you and know why? why is that? You are so lucky. Because it's are... gonna be sixty two degrees at Willow Springs this weekend. You're racing in the high desert, and I looked at the forecast and I believe it's gonna be eighty. Yeah. Yeah. I mean it's one fourteen last year. I know. Hold on a second. Pulling up my little my little machiny thing here. Saturday, 78, Sunday, 81. Now there's wind, which means it could feel like yeah. it's 40. Yeah, so, but that's all right But because I didn't bring any cold weather gear. So. Of course not. Yeah. So so from that standpoint, if, you, if you're not – a lot of people don't race out here in the summer because of the weather. Right. So you need to put out on all of your Champ Car forums, hey, weather's going to be spectacular for racing this weekend at Willow Springs. See if you can get some more cars out there. Maybe. Yeah, it's um... – it is going to be pretty good. Uh, yeah. Right now, I'm in Phoenix. Nice. Uh, actually, Goodyear, Arizona. Mm -hmm. It's a it was 108, 109 degrees this afternoon. Somebody said Ooh. posted up 110. Uh, it was pretty hot. Spent the day out at a uh, uh, water park with my grandkids right. and had some good times nice. after doing some work this morning for Champ Car. And uh, tomorrow morning, bright and early, headed to Los Angeles, and uh, should should be nice nice day to travel through the desert. Hopefully my AC is still working. Yes, hopefully. Yeah. You, you, you definitely want your AC to be working tomorrow. <laughs> I, so I, I went up. I came down yesterday from um, – I, I, there's a fire going on in Flagstaff. Right, so big one. I decided instead of going that way to cut through Payson, Arizona, right. the mountains. And it was like 97, 98 degrees up on Interstate 40. I got off the highway, went, you know, single lane – road i'm thinking oh my goodness i picked the wrong road here because i bet this thing turns to dirt in any moment and no it didn't That's but good. It, i w went into the forest 72 degrees it was absolutely beautiful smell the pine trees everywhere yeah. dropped down into phoenix got into downtown phoenix i had decided to turn off the ac and see if i could man up and and drive through i got to downtown phoenix and yeah yeah no. windows went up mm. ac went on <laughs> There, and there's there's no um there's no shame in that by the way no, i mean it's I it was it's hot yeah well a lot of it had to do with it, it was really loud on the highway so okay. it was there's you know phoenix people don't phoenix is is a big city right it's it's a huge area um they have a couple of racetracks here it's, yeah it's that big they've got pir which is you know where they do the nascar yep. races yeah they got... used to have a really nice road track there it went outside yep. the track just like uh, new hampshire yep just like new hampshire and, yeah and then uh we had firebird raceway which is uh lone horse star some some it has yeah. a horse name in it bonderant now, does bon bonderant still own i think bonderant yeah i think somebody owned yeah. it at one point yeah but uh, when I lived here back in the 80s, it was Firebird Raceway. And right. It was a great little track. It was yeah. fun. That was one of the first racetracks I ever actually raced on that cool. was in the United States, not overseas. So. Nice. Yeah. But, nice. Uh, but yeah, it's uh, we're headed to Willow Springs, and uh, hopefully it'll be pretty nice there. Hopefully we'll get a few more cars to show up. We've got, uh, I think, nine or ten showing up this, this weekend. Autobahn has uh, considerably more cars. Chelsea's there this weekend doing that race, right. and uh, she gets all the fun ones. Um, you know, it's going to be hot up there as well. Uh, and that's a track where nobody's allowed to wear shorts on, on pit lane. Oh, and, yeah. uh, just to let everybody know that, uh, if you're going to Audubon, you better have your, your big boy pants on because you can't wear big boy point, big boy shorts. Yeah. There you go. There you go. And the one thing that you'll have 
probably at Autobahn that you, I'm almost certain, will not have at Willow Springs is humidity. Yes, yes. <laughs> and I, yeah, my, uh, um, I think my, my daughter and I were talking about that earlier today. She, she, we, we had a family reunion in Florida last year and she said, you know, she got out of the car when they arrived in Florida and she's like, oh my God, the humidity, it yeah. just, it was the worst ever for her. Yeah. And she's like, there's no way I have a, another daughter that lives in Florida, Jacksonville. And she's like, I could never live there. Could not yeah. do it. And, I had a hard time yeah. when I moved to Atlanta, getting used to the humidity. And, and I realized that, you know, I could take a shower before work and I'd take the five, 40, oh, yeah. 40 step walk to the car to drive to work. And then the, you know, hundred yard walk into work. And I, why did I even take a shower? It was yeah. complete waste of time and effort. Um, cause he just, you're a drippy, disgusting mess. So we don't have that problem. Speaking, out here. speaking of dripping, disgusting mess, we just came off a weekend of Le Mans. Well, that's a segue. <laughs> that's what I'm all about, man. We just came off a, a big weekend race weekend at Le Mans. Um, some good racing going on up there. Some people called it a little boring. I, I like any racing. It doesn't matter if it's yeah. boring or not. And, uh, our, our, uh, champ car alum, uh, Bill Riley yeah. actually did pretty well. They they went the whole race and stayed out of trouble, and they and I think they finished fourth or fifth, fifth overall. Yeah. And uh, oh, sorry, not overall in their class, and I think thirty in the mid thirties overall, which is pretty darn good. Yeah. In, in that Ferrari, so um, with, they beat a lot. Which of really class good were they in? That, was that a GT? GT Pro. GT Pro. Okay. Yeah, they had GT okay. Pro. Well, it, and then it, B, Ben Keating also he took first place in his class, and. Uh, Ben's a great Ben's, guy. Yeah, Ben also is a uh, 24 hour of uh, VIR alum and oh, nice. raced a bunch of different races with us. Yeah, he has a couple of Hondas. His dealership guys have put together um, a couple of Honda Accords, big yellow banana looking things, and uh, they bring him to the VIR 24 hour and race with us there. So cool. uh, Ben's a really cool guy. Had dinner with him a couple times, yeah. and uh, uh, whenever we've raced or worked together, and, and uh, I'm gonna have him on this. Show Absolutely, including Bill Riley. I need to get Bill on this. Get them both on the, on show. the show. Different yeah. shows because they they yeah. can both tell enough stories to hold oh. their own on a show. Yes, we'll yes. have to talk. I I was uh, I interviewed him right after one of his cars burned down at uh, at I think VIR actually. Uh, he was doing IMSA or maybe back then it was American Le Mans. I don't remember. Mm -hmm. But uh, and he was like, ah, oh, you, know, you know, it's racing. You know, I was like, dude, your car just burned to the ground. <laughs> Anyway, um, and that's funny how as a car owner, me, that was always a fear of just losing everything. But you you have to be able to lose yep. the car in yep. this. If, if you if you can't lose the car and come back, you shouldn't be doing the sport right. anyway. Right. It's yeah. a very expensive sport, even though we're on the low budget end of it, you know, defined right. budget. Yep. But I, I never went to the racetrack without the idea that I could bring everything back in a ball. Yeah. You know, and I it would sucks. probably not race for another year and a half to, to get my crap back together and do it again. And you never want that to happen. But I would never, you know, if, if it happened, I'd go to work the next day and be fine. You know, I would suck. I, I mean, we broke the nose off the car a couple of times and the drive home was like, I'm done. I'm done with this. I just, I can't recover from this. Yep. And of course, I and then a week figured later, it out. Yeah. yeah. A week later, we've got the car back together and we're ready for the next race in two yeah. weeks. Excellent. So, yeah. Yeah. All right, so do we want to? I think do we want to talk about each race a little bit, or do we want to just say we're, we're, we're racing this weekend? We're racing this weekend. Okay, good, good, yeah. good, good. And we've talked about them enough over the last couple of weeks. Yeah. Well, we've we've had two weeks off between races, which is unusual. Oh. Oh, we just added a new race. Oh yes, I was going to talk just, about that I, after the tech tip, but we can talk about it now. Oh, okay, sorry. And and the best name of a race, by the way. Oh, thank you. That was all me. Ah. Uh, Oh, then it was an awful name. What a horrible name for a race. The Big Easy Enduro. The, the Big Easy yeah. Enduro. We are at NOLA Motorsports Park this November 18th of the 22nd. we got a Friday move-in, Saturday and Sunday race, eight and a seven hour. Um, you guys asked for a race at NOLA. Dana has delivered. Nice. And he has uh, posted that up, called me up today. And actually, he messaged me. And, of course, I needed, a, I needed an answer. I wanted to tell him my answer which was easier than typing it all out because it was pretty detailed. And he says, Hey, we got a race at NOLA. Nice. How about this? So that's so cool. 
Yeah. And we'll have more details on that. I've got to start doing up the steps on that pretty right. quickly. I'll, I'll do that probably uh, on my way back from Willow. He's going to get me some more info this weekend. Cool. Um, I don't know if they have garages there. Do you know if they have garages? I've never been there. Uh, well, they ran an IndyCar race there once. So my suspicion is they have garages. Okay. But I don't know Even, that for sure. Yeah. But yeah, there's still a bunch of info that we have to get from the track about cool. what we can and can't do. So we've cool. got the contracts. He signed them. They're on their way back. So right. yay. November 18th to the 22nd, NOLA Motorsports Park, 8 plus 7 hour enduro, the big easy enduro at NOLA, $1,500 or 1550 bucks to enter that race. Remember, your champ car entry includes your car, all your drivers, and all your crew, and that's it. Damn no man. extra fees added on unless you wanted to buy a garage or you need to pay for your club memberships as uh, champ car is a club organization. Cool. Awesome. You know what time it is? It's tech tip time. <laughs> I'm crying. I know. I cried all the way here, man. <laughs> this tech tip. I have it my daily driver. Well, we're a Honda family, and uh, had to fill up the Honda Civic today out here in California. And, and 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 let me just say, I'm really not complaining because I chose to live in California, and I knew it was expensive for gas here. But <laughs> that said, it cost me $68 to fill up a Honda Civic today. I paid <laughs> in Oklahoma... One hundred and forty dollars mm. to fill up my truck with diesel. With diesel, okay. So diesel is a little more expensive, but you also get better gas. Except in California. Oh, that's true. Yeah, because everything diesel is cheaper. Not by much, though. No, I know. <laughs> so yeah, that's because we so have that special blend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and and I've spent almost six hundred dollars to travel out here which is still considerably cheaper than it was to rent another car that got better gas right, mileage right, right. end up you would yeah it's but it's um one thing that i noticed is that i did see racers driving out but gas costs so much money now that you know a lot of us put the fuel in the truck we have the can sitting in the back <laughs> You know, you've got yeah. your race car trailer and everybody knows you've got fuel in those trailers. Make sure you tone it down. <laughs> and our tech tip is we don't want you guys losing that hard earned fuel because <laughs> people will see your fuel yeah. and it will become something they want to have. Exactly. And we don't, you know, and that can cause issues. And, and the that. only karma in that would be is if they took your tank of diesel and put it in their unleaded tank. That would yeah. make me very happy. <laughs> that would, that would. <laughs> Yeah. Don't laugh because I kind of did that one time. Oh yeah, I, yeah. I've heard the stories. I was uh, in France. Yeah, when I was in the shop, I, I I I remember when the person came in and didn't understand why the they the, they were like the nozzle wouldn't fit in the tank and I couldn't figure it out, so I just got it as close as I could and I let the I let the gas go in really slow. <sighs> Yeah, I kind of i I was at a, a it was either a French or a Belgium gas station, mm -hmm. and it was about the time that unleaded was just coming on over there. And in England, unleaded pumps were green, mm -hmm. and the green pump at the handle right. in France or Belgium, wherever wherever I was at, was green. So I put it in, and it I can't remember if it fit or not, but I didn't have any issues. But I and somebody pointed out, hey, that's diesel that you're putting in your gas car. And I'd put maybe a gallon into it. Okay, that's not too bad. It wasn't bad. It just it's, rents you know, really rich tank. for... <laughs> it, it lubes the upper end very really well. It does. It does. It does. <laughs> Probably cleans out the valves pretty well. So much. how many tanks of gas did it take for you to start up without a puff of black smoke out the back of the car? Well, I almost started an international instant at the <laughs> Zabruga uh, ferry terminal because uh, in Belgium. Because I just sat there smoking like crazy, you know, pumping yeah, yeah. The, the gas to try and burn that diesel yeah, yeah. out. That's awesome. And uh, these motorcyclists behind me wanted to beat me up, but they seemed to be really nice. Yeah. But they still wanted to beat me up because I was polluting the earth. And this was in the 80s. You yeah. Know? Who knew that people wanted to save the earth back then? I know. Too bad we didn't do more of that back in the 80s. <laughs> yeah. Okay. 
anyway. No, I'm kidding. Anyway, but yeah, so, just, so uh, the watch your the, fuel is not like you know watch your gas mileage on the racetrack. It's it's yeah. literally if you're driving around with a bunch of fuel jugs in the back of your pickup truck going to a race, be careful because if they're full, they may not be full when you get to the racetrack. Or you could create an incident of some sort. You know how America is right yes. now, and I don't want to get all political, but right. you know you, that's Hoarding. that's gold. Yeah, yes, yeah. and that's gold. So yeah. Just put a cover on it, hide it, do yeah. something. Don't have your fuel cans, you know, your Hunsaker drums with the or <laughs> with the big nozzles sticking out everywhere. Just yeah. saying, hey, come get me. There you go. There you go. All right. So when we come back and 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 we get to chat with someone who you've told me for months we're gonna have on the show. And finally she showed up. And... I didn't give her any choice. I said, hey, you're on the show tonight. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you didn't because what a great conversation. I learned a lot and uh, an extraordinarily impressive person, and it was great to have have her on the show. I'm not going to say her name. We're going to keep it a secret, or maybe we won't. If you read the show notes, you know who it is. <laughs> and saw the big picture of her That's that right. I have yet to pick, but I go. get to pick the picture. And be she nice, know this Bill. Yet. Be nice to her. Okay. I'm always nice be to Be nice Bill. to her, or else I'll come um, after you. Oops. <laughs> I said the word. I said the C word. All right. Chelsea Vickery is our guest. She'll be with us next on Inside Champ Car. I'm Brian Polanski. He's Bill Strong. We'll be right back. Every race weekend, you don't know what's going to happen. But with Champ Car. Live, all the action comes right into your living room. The Champ Car Endurance Series is North America's home to real competitive endurance road racing. And ChampCar.Live brings you live, full race coverage with in-car, trackside cameras, interviews, and expert commentary. And ChampCar.Live brings you live, full race coverage with in-car and trackside cameras, interviews, and expert commentary. Check out ChampCar.Live on the web, subscribe, and ring the bell so as not to miss a single minute of the action. It's fun, free, informative, and it's just a click away. ChampCar.Live, come check us out. We bring you a front row seat, but you'll only need the edge. Welcome back to Inside Champ Car. I'm Brian Belansky. He is... Bill Strong. And we are doing the Inside Champ Car Podcast. And I am so excited. I've heard about this person for, like, months. And I I almost didn't think that she existed because we just hadn't had her on the show. And and so it's like this this alter ego. There's a big aura around this person's (laughs) personality. Bigger right. than life. He stays in the shadows, That's though. right. That's right. <laughs> this is a Champ Car Race Director Extraordinaire, Chelsea Vickery. Hello. Well, hello, everyone. How are you? She I'm was, good. Thanks for was, having me. She was voted 2019. Let me get this right. 2019, 2020, yes. 2021, 2022, Best Female Race Director in Champ Car. Unanimous. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Well, the only one. <laughs> Oh, oh. She's, the only, she's the only one. The only one, yeah. <laughs> but you don't, know, Chelsea. You could have just let that go. I could have. The world wouldn't have known that. that. The world. I know. I know. That's just... <laughs> <laughs> well, welcome to the show. Um, Thank you. This will be, I'm sure, the first of many guest appearances, and uh, <laughs> and and so I I am personal friends with a lot of race directors, and I know that you have probably the worst job at the racetrack <laughs> hands down you know I, I hear that a lot uh, um, especially in the tower you know you have you have situations and then they leave and they're like man i wouldn't want this job and then right. <laughs> the door closes it's like all right that's right you're <laughs> i do love it though i do uh, good. It's, it's pretty funny though because when when you know some of these guys are pretty hot under the collar when they get that black flag or whatever and you know they they, they march on up to the to the tower and they swing open that door and they come in with authority and there's little Chelsea standing there and they just become this little, these little kids like, Oh, sorry, mom. I, I didn't mean to like, you know, do that, hit that guy or whatever. Sorry, mom. Sheesh. I hoped it was like walking into the control room and I just turn around in my Dr. Evil chair. I thought it was more oh. like that, but you're <laughs> it, playing, you're playing it out to me. No, I'm just kidding. It is, um. it, but you are <laughs> like that sometimes. And that's, yeah. and, and that, that, uh, 
disarms these guys pretty quick. I'll yeah, do my best. Kind of. My de- my best total wolf impersonation. No, Chelsea, it's wrong, Chelsea. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Exactly. So yeah. so how did you get involved with racing in the first place? Let's start with that because you don't just like become Gosh. a race director. What's what's your background? No, I know. Man, you know, I was thinking this because I figured this was probably going to come, you know, be a question. And it's like, where do I start? So it's just like I could go way back into like my childhood and how it kind of got an interest into cars even, you know. Um, I guess that would just start with my dad. My dad owns several body shops in southern Indiana and I always tell the sis. I always tell the sister story. I have an older sister and an older brother, and my dad would always be in the shop every weekend, doing projects, you know, fixing this or that. And my mom would go shopping, and she would have me and my sister, so she would just drop me off, and her and my sister would go shopping because I just hated that, and I would just be in the shop um, with my dad. You know, it was probably from five years old on up through my you know preteen and into teenage years it just would be hanging out in the shop with my dad and uh he taught me a lot he was one of those you know great influences that would just break stuff down and he was really is really patient guy so he taught me a lot and just kind of sparked my interest and we would watch racing on the weekends sometimes and my granddad's a huge nascar fan and stuff like that and It just, uh, I probably worked through in high school, throughout high school and um, into my early 20s at my dad's shop. So from there. So what what did you do in dad's shop? Were you actually banging on cars or were you (laughs) out front helping out? So I remember like my first summers, it was, I was washing cars. Okay. So That is no, no fun. Then from there, we went into like prepping cars. So sanding and still no fun. um, Still no fun. Absolutely. (laughs) You know, walking out, no fingertips, just like arms numb, full, you know, whole nine yards. I'd have, you know, friends in high school that, you know, my dad could paint cars. So it's like, you know, we were doing projects for, you know, some of our friends and then me, my brother and my sister he would get either a totaled car or a um, our salvage titled car or, you know, we would be in there and we would help him fix it. And that was our first car. Each of us had to had to work on it for months, even remember getting my license and I still had to wait like a month because it wasn't quite finished, um, <laughs> but it was worth it. And we, you know, what we kind of what? What kind of car was that? Your first car? Oh gosh, you're gonna make me say it. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely, because we all have the story. It's not a, it's not a car. I'm from Southern Indiana, and back then, <laughs> back then, truck. I was into the truck scene, okay. so I actually, I had a lifted Chevy Silverado, and it had, it was on 35s. It was two toned. We shaved the door handles. Um, I just kind of, you know, had that truck for a while. From there, um, we did we did a Lexus um, SC three hundred, yeah. and then so you went from a hip car to a granny car, to a granny car. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, you know, the gas prices, truck. gas prices, right. that truck. I was like, yeah, that hit a girl hard because my family, it was like, all right, you're gonna drive it, but be prepared, like you got to work for what you got, right? Yeah, so, cool. Um, something I appreciated really, you know, it taught me a lot, especially but... now. <clears throat> yeah my dad had he had a cobra i mean we uh first time i ever you know he taught us how to weld it was just every kind of welding he wanted us to learn and it was you know gosh if i could have had a camera of that you know i was probably a teenager probably 13 learning how to weld with him and um he got a total cobra in and we put a quarter clip on it when i was probably i think it was 16 so he let me drive that one to high school and <laughs> had some fun in that one. Um, but I don't know. Uh, I've had plenty of other cars. I have a Camaro now. And there's just being a body shop kid. I was right. fortunate right. enough to have kind of that life. Um, so what was your first yeah. first time at the racetrack? 
Oh gosh. Um, man, I had friends that were into racing here in town. So like HPD, DEs, we had, Mm -hmm. you know, Putnam Park here in Indiana. Um, so that's, you know, that's our, was our local kind of spot. Uh, but getting into like big time and being around like big time racing, I actually got into that doing marketing. Um, I decided that I wanted to, you know, get out of the shops and start traveling, maybe move away. I lived in Texas for a year. Um, and then I found a job through a place called FM3 Marketing and I was 21 and I went from working in the shop in a little town of Indiana to going to this job interview um, and then being put on a plane and going to like Circuit of the Americas. It was nice. zero to, <laughs> yeah, it was zero to a hundred. I had never really been to a big track except for like the Speedway and, you know, stuff like that kind of locally um, and then the stuff on TV of obviously growing up watching. Um, so yeah, to be thrown into that so fast was really a blessing. I, uh, marketed racing seats for Carl racing seats. Nice. So yeah, I, I like first... how, you know, people from Indiana are so nonchalant, you know, my first big time at the track was at the speedway and then she yeah, went right on somebody else. That, that by the, fo- that's the Indianapolis motor speedway. She's talking about <laughs> folks. Not, yeah. It's not just any old, you know, know. it's, oh, it's it the speedway. <laughs> So we right? go- you're telling me when we went to Indianapolis and you actually got to see, you know, go up in the tower. Oh right. my gosh. I was just. Oh, come on, yeah. Chelsea. You're like, what are you guys all crooning over all this stuff? For? <laughs> this, is, this is normal everyday stuff yeah. from Indiana girl. Yeah. <laughs> I did get to get, I did a, um, the ride along in the Indy car. That was pretty cool. Yeah. I, I just, incredible feeling sure. you know what those guys do or just yeah. it's insane but yeah no going to indy with champ car that was pretty incredible for an indiana gal well it's just like anytime you get to go race at your home track wh- wherever that is for you know it's really a pretty <laughs> cool experience uh and and especially if you're in a car that can win <laughs> right i've yeah. not had that experience yet i'm working on that <laughs> <laughs> but um, cool. So so you're doing this stuff with Recaro, and then and then at some point in time you get connected with Champ Car. Yes. And you got to work with this I... crazy dude, Bill <laughs> Bill Bill Week, Bill something, Bill Strong. That's his name. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I traveled kind of you know with Recaro. I got pulled over into Optima. Um, my bosses then had a series called ultimate streetcar okay um that was i don't know it was on map tv yep, and yep. It's, it's pretty cool um different variety of cars and uh, so kind of got pulled into racing that way um, did you get involved with map tv through lucas because they're really big in indiana is that how that connection ca- came together Mm-mm, no okay. i got pulled from or it was the same my bosses had the recaro program got it, okay just yeah pulled me over no. into optima now but we do right. all different series. Like right, right. we would go to like um we sponsored World Challenge back then yep. when it was then. Uh we did uh some of the, you know, um, Grand Prix, uh drifting, the whole nine yards. We would do car shows and um they also built shows. So like LS Fest and and all oh, okay. of that. We would I was on that production team um so so guys part of the connection between chump car champ car and fm3 is that mike morrison uh event director for champ car jimmy Mm -hmm. day was jimmy day's uh one of the big bosses with that company okay um he actually was on our board of directors and worked with champ car and chump car in the early days and that's kind of how we got the um the optima battery sponsorship okay okay so yeah, um, and Jimmy Jimmy Day and Wally Ozak, they're yeah. the people behind FM3, and they took a chance on me um, and put me out there, and I, you know, marketing, they pretty much let me do a lot of different things and learn a lot of different things, and, you know, without the, them and Mike Morrison, Mike Morrison especially, and, you know, Mike Chiswick, whenever I put my name in to be an, uh, you know, event director, they all, you know, believed in me and 
took the time to train and, and, um, really encouraged me. And, uh, yeah, I'm thankful for all of them. You know, we don't see a lot of women in motorsports and there is a lot of different reasons and, and whatnot, but I do, you know, see a lot more women breaking into the industry and, you know, racing in, you know, back when I was even just on the sidelines, you know, going to world challenge, you know, I remember just a crowd and, handful of teams of just all men and then you just see you know one two three just a handful of women really right, right. um and, what i meant and, yeah and that's changing too slowly oh, for sure and uh, it's so you know cool. there was a really cool picture from indy this year um from uh, they got together all or, or, or a bunch of the women who were involved with the teams uh mm-hmm. mostly in engineering roles but they were all wearing their team their team you know uh you know fire suits and everything and there must have been maybe 10 10 women uh ganassi is really uh, a big proponent of hiring women uh, but there yeah. was a couple of mandretti there were a couple of firestone engineers a couple of honda engineers so um sure. it's so it, cool it's to see so awesome to see that so mm-hmm. yeah for sure you know like last year I did Daytona. Dana let me do that one. And that's the biggest race yet for me. Uh, 120 cars started and um, was unique that I had Amy Powell, who's the head of the safety team um, for our races. She, she was there. She's a fellow Indiana girl. Um, Evansville actually were from the same, same town. Um, I worked with her and a lady from the SCCA. So it was, you know, all women running that race and, it was really cool moment. Very cool moment. And it was really intimidating when I went up there and just everybody would look <laughs> at me and tell me to shut up. And it's like, oh, God, I'm outnumbered here big time. Yes. Yeah. It sounds <laughs> like because my house. Your picture, yeah, it's because your picture is on the, on the <laughs> wall. On the wall. <laughs> Wanted. Yeah. Don't let this man in. Yeah, we have those at work. Where we have a couple. Of, we have a stalker at work. I work at a radio station, and, and, and we get radio stations, you know, stalkers for oh some of the, the women personalities. So there's there's yeah. there's posters, people's guys' pictures on the wall. Don't let this guy in. There's a picture of Bill on our wall in L.A. It's amazing. <laughs> so so explain well, to folks who might not know what. <clears throat> so is your title event director or race director? What's the official title? I. Have- Whatever oh, I business. make it, it's whatever <laughs> I make it. <laughs> right? It's like when I tell people that I'm a race director, they just kind of look at me funny. So event director, kind of, I think people put it more together, um, but still always have to kind of break it down. I, event director, race director, event wise, you know, we, we plan it from right. the get go. Our, you know, off season, we get contracts, we read through, we make sure that our schedules are right. We, pre-plan i bug bill a million times <laughs> um gazillion times uh and you know we get the information out there and we start you know working these races up and making sure that everything kind of goes good right. for the so weekend the, That's so not- the event brian the event director is the person that does pretty much everything to get uh to get the track ready right yeah. Where our races the, to show up. But when the green flag falls, what's your role, Chelsea? <clears throat> She's right. the boss. Then, the, then I feel like that's more of like a race director. Right. Okay. Kind of title. Yeah. You know, that's when I'm, you know, waiting for calls to come in from the corner workers that so and so did something or that something's going on. Um, so, there's a lot of decisions that have to be made up there. Right. Um, you know, when instances they happen, there's so much stuff that just happens out there, little, big, small. Um, and even, you know, while the race is going on, there's stuff maybe in the parking lot that's right. going on. There's just so much. Um, but yeah, during the race, I'm, I'm in the tower. I'm the bad guy, you know, black throwing out black flags yeah. if needed. Um, so yeah. I, I, I won't say how old you are. Cause I've, I've <laughs> learned that you should never divulge a lady's age, <laughs> but I know that you're not, you're not old by any stretch. And I, and I always tell people you know, that, you know, I, I've done this a very long time. I am old. Not as old as Bill, but I'm old. And, and I've been in, in the control tower for two decades. I don't know any race director at any level who is your age, let alone a woman doing it. That's fairly impressive. Thank you. Um, 
Yeah. And, you know, I kind of mentioned, you know, people gave me a chance and I'm, I'm really thankful for that. And, you know, they believed in me, they helped me. And it's, I love to see, you know, more women coming in and, and more men giving out chances and, and kind of, you know, giving opportunities. Yeah. I, I wouldn't trade it for anything. I, I love what I do for sure. I don't think we look at the sex of the person to see, determine if they can do the job. We right. just look at the person and she can do the job and she's really, really good at it. Right. Um, yeah. But I'll never forget, you know, being, being, I think I, what, I'm three years in as yeah. a director now. I trained for a year, but I was 20, 28, you know, when I threw my name in the pot and it was kind of like, okay, well, she's been around, you know, at that time, I think it was like two and a half, three years. Um, and then just doing some other racing stuff previously, it was just like, all right, you know, let's see what we can, what you do and see how serious, you know, you take this and learn. And, right. um, it's been great. It really has. So, so when you're 30 ish male or female and you're in the tower, first of all, 90% of the people you're, you're dealing with <laughs> as drivers and team owners are guys. And, yes. and most of them, many of them have gray hair like Bill um, <laughs> and, and me. Shh, don't tell anyone. Um, um, but when, when people walk through the door and usually the only time you get to see the race director is when you've done something wrong, you know, okay. or you don't like a decision the race director's made. H- how mm-hmm. do you manage those situations when, you know, guys can be pretty hot under the collar and come through the door all ready to get fired up or maybe already fired up. (laughs) How how do you handle that? Yeah. Well, you know, I think it's, um, you always have to keep your cool. Like number one, it's just, I'm a very, uh, very just easygoing person to begin with. So I always try to gauge, you know, when somebody comes in you can tell that they're upset a, I, I do understand, right? Like there are some things that can happen that people can be upset, but a lot of times all it takes is a conversation. And I think a lot of times that conversation, how it goes, how you, you know, deliver what you need to say, or, you know, sometimes I just have to stick firm and, you know, they will talk. <laughs> like if I, if I make a call and somebody's mad per se, and they'll give me every reason from A to Z on why it's wrong. Right. Right. And sometimes it's like, sorry you know you got you have to just stay strong in what your corner workers are telling you what your cameras are telling you um if you're lucky enough to have them and you depends know depends on you whether have to... bill's setting up the cameras or not <laughs> exactly exactly well, we provide you know that's one thing that, that we try to do is provide the race director with as much information as they need to do the race and that mm-hmm. is part of it and chelsea was quick to um accept that and to use it and to use it to help her make choices. And it's pretty funny when they walk in and they're ready to fight and they're ready to <laughs> argue their statement. And she holds up a picture of the, of the, the flag they just passing and, and, and they just, you, you can see them just drop their head and like turn around and walk out the room. Yeah. <laughs> Those are always the greatest, right? When you do have that, like some yeah. tracks will have that playback moment where they just don't miss nothing and you can just have it paused, ready to go. Like, <laughs> Cause you know, they're coming. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, you know, they're coming. So yeah, that's, that's a good, you know, good has, thing to have. But. Has Flagtronics helped to um, help oh, you yeah. do your job? I really do. I really appreciate Flagtronics. It gives me a little bit more communication with the cars, you know, especially the black flag. I, everybody knows I love that feature. I, um, sometimes we get people not coming in under a black flag and it's it's really cool to be able just to plug in a number and it pop up and they come in immediately. Or sometimes you can get them to come in before the you know yeah. they come around to the Black Flag station. So sure, um, yeah, you can see you know I was just like the visibility that it gives you the the GPS map you know in the tower you can kind of see where your cars are and um, make better you know calls if you are working a situation out there with uh, you know fire crews out on track or out on the track so um yeah I, I do like flagtronics a lot what's your your favorite part about doing this job <laughs> i man i really appreciate you know the way everything comes together you know you work as a director you you work really hard to build a race and then you know i still get nerves drive into a racetrack 
for the weekend only because there's there is a you know handful of things that can go wrong that do they pop up no matter what right. there's things that are going to pop up um but seeing it all come together you know dropping the green flag dropping the checkered flag and doing it all over again the next day you know with a crew that is there because they want to be um we have the, some of the best staff hands down you know dana he works really hard and keeps us you know all in line um no she didn't mention he, you bill the best he, yeah exactly the he, best he, he pointed he, at me he <laughs> exactly There's everybody no camera, bill cough, 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 cough. Yeah. brian go to channel two please <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> So, um, did you tell him your, that you got the van stuck? Does he know that story? Uh, maybe, maybe not. Yeah, I, oh, I, I didn't hear it from him. I heard it from someone else. Uh, Bill didn't just yeah. come out with that. Mm -hmm. um, that was a camera situation yeah, where we were at. We were yeah. at Road America and we had the cameras, and there was a call that came up. I think this guy has a van stuck, and they zoom in, and it's Bill. <laughs> In That's his awesome. van, like we're in the tower, zoomed in on him. Yeah, so he has uh, his fair share of. I've got a friend trouble. who is a <clears throat> uh, a wedding coordinator, and mm -hmm. they tell me that when they're done with the wedding and they're driving away, there's a sense of satisfaction. Do you kind of yeah. get that same feeling at the end on Sunday? Um, everything's packed up, you know, <laughs> and and let's say you're at Daytona, the big one of your biggest races of the year, and you're driving off the lot, going through the tunnel. Oh my gosh! How does that feel? Yeah. So, um, Mike Morrison, he's probably the, the one person that really trained me the most. We actually call that the big sigh moment. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> like it's, it's big sigh. And if he's still to this day, if he has a big weekend, you know, and I know it's that Sunday rollout time, I always text like big sigh. And sometimes he'll text me the same thing. And it yeah. is, it's just, you know, you plan for months, this this race right. and you have multiple races, you know, sometimes back to backs and it can get really hectic, but, um, yeah, seeing it all come together and play out, it really is. It's, it's cool. It's definitely a part of the job that I love. So, nice. yeah. So tell me some bill stories. We got to have a bill story besides the God. man. I, there's the gotta be dozens, right? Yeah. Besides, I mean, there's times where we like the rogue photographer, if anytime we have a rogue photographer, even if we have other media, I'm always, my first question is like, is it Bill? Where's like, Bill? Is it Bill? <laughs> and it's like, sometimes, you know, he's doing a million things at the track. So he just kind of runs out and he might not have his vest on, which he's better at now. But there are times that he's just like, we zoom in and it's, there he is. There's Bill. We look. But um, you should no, like I'm thankful for Bill. In. He really does help. He helps a lot. He's, he's helped me out, you know, my transition into this we, was, you know, Chiswick at first, and then I did my first year, and then all of a sudden Dana stepped in. So there was a lot of changes, and um, yeah, Dana and Bill really they came together and they they helped help me out a lot. So thankful for them. Do you get the chance to put your stamp on an event? Is there something that like, if I go to a, a Champ Car event that Dana is the race director, and I go to a Champ Car event where you're the race director? Do I see something different? Do I feel something different between the two mm -hmm. events? Um, we definitely, we do things differently. We have that common ground on, you know, he wants things done. And, and I think it's, we both think it's great to be on that same page of how we operate and how we run things. So operations wise, we are, we try to be very exact on just how we, we run things and what we expect of our drivers. Um, <clears throat> But um, yeah, I don't know. We're different. We're different people. He has a military background. We got a lot of respect for Dana. Um, he he knows what he's doing, and um, he's he's been great to work for. That's for sure. Cool. He's definitely doing the CEO role and the event director role, and I can only imagine you know all this all the work that he has going on. So um, that may be. I know even we're. we're as I said, that may be the difference is that you're he's you're looking at the big picture on the race weekend, but he's also looking at the big picture of the entire organization. <laughs> For you know? sure. Yeah. So that could like, be like how, like how much is Bill spending this weekend? <laughs> <laughs> right. It's like that we roll out and it's like I got to, you know, I always try to follow up with a, you know, how the race went. So we just kind of check in and well, the weekend went this way and vice versa. You know, we kind of decompress together and he's uh 
great. You know, we kick ideas around and, and stuff like that. So we're trying to bring up um, two or several other directors and maybe take some, some load off of him and I. We've been the only two running races for the past two years. So nice. it's been good. Cool. So, yeah. Anything else, Bill, we, we want to touch on before we, we let Chelsea go off on her way? Chelsea just sent me an email with a gag order, so. <laughs> I said, join the podcast. Yeah, 8, 8 p.m. I'm like, 8 p.m. No. Uh, uh, I'm so uh, glad you guys had me, though. I really um, appreciate she was, it. She was really nervous about this, and I don't know why. I, I, I don't I, either. I think, so, you know, because we're on the road so much, we know so much about each other. You know, not her and I, but just all of us. Right. <laughs> you know, all, yeah. all, 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 all the folks that work together. And it's really funny that, you know, there's some things that you know, it might be a little too personal or whatever sometimes. Right. And <laughs> we're just like a little band of misfits. We, oh you know, God, we, we yes. go and we work, we work from sunup to sundown yeah. all weekend. And I, we love each other. We yeah. it's love hate sometimes, but you know, we get through it. We're, we're a family, you know, at the end of the day, I feel that um, we work very well together and it really is a great group of people. So I don't know. Uh, Okay, yeah. Charles, before I let you go, it's just you and me. Bill's not here, okay? <laughs> Whenever there's something you need me to talk about on the show that Bill's done, mm-hmm. I'm going gonna, I'm mm-hmm. to send you my email address so I can so, do, when, every race weekend, I need little Bill tidbits, okay? <laughs> Brian, can you hear me? Can you hear me now? A direct, uh, what, a direct line. Ch- Chelsea, switch to channel two, please. Yeah. Channel right. two. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's awesome. Cool, cool. All right, Chelsea Vickery, our guest champ car race director event director extraordinaire thank you so much uh we will definitely have you on the show again oh, she's she's going to be live this weekend at autobahn country club okay performing <laughs> performing friday saturday and sunday bill <laughs> yes he, he's not going to make it till tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> better pipe down no we are going to be at autobahn this weekend um andy Vax, he's going to be doing a little directing his first real race so uh we will be checking in with you at willow bill it's gonna yes, be a great week yep we'll racing all right that's Thank good you guys that's gonna do it for this uh not for this episode but for this segment we'll be right back after this to talk about a little bit what's going on next race weekend we'll do that when we come back on inside champ car inside champ car is a podcast that takes a deep dive into all things going on with the champ car endurance series hosted by veteran journalist radio host and racer brian belansky and champ car's very own bill strong we talk to drivers team bosses tech gurus and series supporters episodes air every week in time for you to listen on your way to the track inside champ car is on the racing wire podcast network found on apple spotify google and most popular podcasting apps Welcome back to Inside Champ Car. He's Bill Strong. I'm Brian Balanski. Just got done with it. Now, at Chelsea, she's a little, little firecracker, ain't she? Yes, she is. Yep. I don't want to would... walk through that door on one of your yeah. events mad because yeah. <laughs> I like yeah, she... her. I like how she refers to herself as Dr. Evil. That's my favorite yes. part. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah, she's she's yeah she's she's <laughs> nothing like that. She's, no, I'm sure she's the nicest young lady that you've ever met. Cool. Though, I do have a broken finger <laughs> to prove otherwise, but it's all right. That's a different story. <laughs> we, I'm glad she didn't talk about that one. Okay. All right. So upcoming, uh, obviously we are we've already talked about this weekend with Willow Springs yeah. and Autobahn, um, but next weekend we're gonna. Yeah, next- we got some Next stuff weekend, going on too. After, after this weekend, I head straight out into the car and uh, load up, and I'm on I-10 all the way out, or maybe I don't know what freeway I'm on, but uh, I am heading to Carolina Motorsports Park in sunny Kershaw, South Carolina, uh-huh. where we're going to be putting on an eight plus seven hour. Nice. Um, now we were supposed to also have uh, that same weekend, Shannonville Raceway, the Canadian arm of our. Our group was going to put on a eight plus seven there, but due to lack of participation at the Shannonville track, they decided to uh, put a hold on that. Um, okay. That's been canceled. Um, and then uh, we head out to uh, Thunder, so far Thunder Hill and uh, Sebring International. Nice. So, so at July. I, I, I like the fact that you guys don't like, you know, a lot of play, you know, 
oh, we've canceled Shannon, but we want to talk about it. You know, it it, it happened. What not enough cars uh, and 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 you guys are like, you know, we, we do what we do and and it's a thing. I know, and it's you know, we see that on our forums. We see how you guys cancel this, the cancel that, that, that. We see all kinds of conversation about it. It's talked about. I mean, yeah. I don't see the reasoning for not talking right. about it. If we didn't have the participation, why didn't we have the participation? You know, it's yeah. uh, just a lot. I mean, well, and, and you know, what we do is expensive. <laughs> Very, and especially right now. <laughs> you know, exactly. You know, so I, I, I get it. You know, sometimes you just don't have the, and I don't know if sometimes maybe if there's other events or, 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 cause that's, you know, we're all fighting for the same drivers a lot of times and, and that kind of stuff. So if there's a lot of stuff going on, on the same weekend, maybe that might have something to do with it. So it Possibly. is my birthday weekend though, which makes me sad, but that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, the other, I mean, the other issue too, remember in Canada, everything is in liters. So that's probably another reason. <laughs> Well, and the other thing is, is if you want, if you're an American team wanting to go and race in Canada, there is some logistics that you got to deal with to make that happen, and it's not all, it's not that easy. No, it used to be all you needed was your driver's license right. go across the uh, the border, not have a uh, criminal past, you know, no arrest for DUIs or something. Oh, yeah, that's why that's... you don't go to the Shannonville races. No, I've never been arrested like that for real. I <laughs> I, I don't I have a passport. I've actually held races over there, held okay. on races in Canada. So. Um, I just haven't got my passport done. I haven't been able to get to the post office to renew it. So I've excuse after excuse, That's but I just, excuse. yeah. Okay. So, but yeah, we just, uh, it, you have to have a passport. All right. You have to, uh, you know, you have to be careful buying fuel, um, to go over there to race. If you bring it, you know, buy it right. in the U S and take it over, or you can buy their very expensive fuel over there. Right. Um, but you have to make sure that every car part you bring over, you bring they back. Bring back, yeah. There's, there's a lot. It's to so it. it's, it's like there's some things. It's not bad. No, it but it's there really is some things. Bad. But it's so. it, it. There's things you have to do. Right. Right. So cool. All right. So I, I'm I'm looking forward to hearing all about uh, the Willow Spring stuff, and we'll talk about that next week as well. The recap that. Yeah. And uh, we'll also talk a little bit more about uh, the race coming up at Carolina Motorsports Park. We'll do that as well. So we'll hear about Willow Springs next week and Autobahn and all that other fun stuff. Mm-hmm. So anything else before we head home? That's about it, really. Um, I'm in. Yep. I'm getting used to the time out here still. and uh, But. Yeah, I'm ready for bed now, man. There you go. There you go. All right. That's going to do it for this episode of Inside Champ Car. If you like what you heard, subscribe to the podcast. You won't miss any episodes. If you, It would also be great if you share it on your social media channels. Comment with only good comments on the NASCAR. On the NASCAR. Wow. There was a Freudian <laughs> slip. Uh, you know what? If you have bad comments, put it on the NASCAR page. If you have good comments, put them on the Champ Car page. Especially, go. <laughs> we've got a new episode every Thursday. For Bill Strong, I'm Brian Polanski. You're listening to the Racing Wire Podcast Network.